tales but little true I'd like to know your point of view Hi everyone, welcome to Evening TV, I'm Evening Ransom. I told the, this channel about my mother dying and how I f and what I plan to do about her memorial service and all of that kind of stuff. So I want to just kind of touch on that for a minute. Um, I didn't go to her memorial service and I really wasn't welcome or invited to go. My brother and father hadn't even told me about it. They hadn't, you know, and of course I've been estranged from my family for about 20 years. And so, um, and I had strong feelings about that. I knew I didn't need to be there at that place and that, you know, to, to talk, to communicate with her, to, you know, whatever. Um, I knew that she knew about this, that this could happen. She had a three-year warning that, that how she died could have happened at any time and she didn't contact me. Um, you know, there's just a lot of things and all the people that were gonna be at this service were out of touch with what happened and, and it would have been very awkward and weird for me to be there and there would have just been all this condolences and things that would have really felt uncomfortable to me. So I didn't go, but what I wanted to say was I made a mistake in that I asked a couple of people that were going. They contacted me and said they wanted to see me, whatever, and I said, oh, I'm not gonna go. Of course, I do also live in Mexico. I live a long ways away. But, but anyways, I told them, I was, oh, you, you know, just let me know, let me know how it is. But well, that was a mistake because one uh, sent me all these pictures and another one sent me sort of this narrative, a summary of all the things that happened. And I'm, you know, I'm sure it was a lovely ceremony. I'm sure it was exactly everything she would have wanted and all of that, which is fine. But it was just so strange to have to look at all these people who all believe a story about me that's not true. And, um, and, and the fact that even though I've gone on and created a whole new life, and even though that's just one little corner of the world, at one time that was my life and it was my corner of the world where everyone I knew lived. And so uh, it was just strange to, to know all that. And then also one of the, it was strange because also people of age. So I, you know, it took me a minute to even figure out who a lot of people were. You know, and uh, so there was that. And then also, see, a pic there was a picture of my ex-husband there, smiling and all just, you know, and the fact that he was there and all that, and I wasn't, just, it just spoke volumes about what was going on and why we were estranged and, and all of that. And uh, so it was just, you know, it was just a big mistake to even inquire about it. It was almost as bad as if I had gone, I feel like. Part of it was because, you know, this was just so far from what I wanted or what I would have expected to happen. You know, in my in my life plan, what my what I would have had happen was that I would have, you know, taken care been a big part of my parents' lives all along and then taking care of them when they were old. And then when they died, I would have been part of planning and get, putting on a service for them. That's what I would have wanted to happen. So the fact that I wasn't there told a whole story about me that wasn't true. You know, the only explanation that people that don't know anything about narcissistic abuse are going to come up with for the fact that I'm not there is that I'm the problem. And that hurts, you know? You really have to just let go of what other people think of you. And it really is just so critically important that you let go of what other people think of you. And also to be really resolved about what, what your plan is before someone dies. You know, you need to know when you get estranged from someone that you've said all there is to say, that you've done all you need to do, and that if someone dies, because we all do die, and you know, it might be 20 years, but it could be 20 days or two hours, you know, and when someone dies. And so you don't want to be estranged from someone if you have unresolved business. You know, things that you can do, things that you could fix. I, I spent a lot of time over these 20 years asking the universe, praying, you know, praying about, you know, is there something I can do? Is there something I'm not seeing? You know, please open my eyes if there's something more for me to do. And the answer just kept being, no, it, it's not on you to fix. You know, um, it's not up to you. And that was always the answer. So when she died, I honestly had almost a sense of relief because uh, what I knew was that there was, our relationship wasn't going anywhere. There'd been no progress. There'd only been, it only gone slid backwards and gotten even worse over time. And so there was that. Plus there was someone, you know, out in the world telling stories about me that weren't true. And now there was not. And also I have the belief that um, our souls keep on living 
and that she was able to see me more clearly than she ever has before. That she has a more honest view on me and what all happened than she ever was able, going to be able to in her life. And so that was sort of relief, and I did feel that relief almost immediately. So anyway, I just kind of wanted to follow up on that and let you know how I felt in retrospect about not going to the memorial service and all that, and um, and also just you know letting go of any ideas you have about justice or uh, you know the truth coming out or any of that because you just have to trust that it's all going to happen on a different level. This is just a small part of who we are and all of that. I mean, I can see, I can see that this was really, really tiny in terms of the world and even in terms of our lives and our souls and the whole thing. I can see that it's really small, but it's still in our 3D world, in our you know world of who we are as people. This was a huge, a huge thing where, you know, Basically everything was stolen from me or erased in the first 37 years of my life at a time when I was most vulnerable and I needed my family and my husband the most. And so it was really, really brutal and, um, and the estrangement was not my choice. I did everything I could think of to do to try and put things back together and, um, and it was just, you know, it was just impossible and this was just sort of the way that it, that it had to go. But I was very much a family-oriented person, so this was really hard for me. And, um, you know, and the fact that it just never got resolved was really hard for me. And so, but I did know all along, you know, my parents were in their 70s and that they were going to die eventually. So when it happened, it really wasn't that big of a shock to me because really, in essence, they all died 20 years ago you know, who I was to them and what I believed was true about our family and all that stuff and love and all that, all died. That all died 20 years ago when this happened. And it, there was no way for me to put that back together. And so, uh, you know, you just have to trust what you know and not gaslight yourself. You know, give yourself, be honest with yourself and be courageous about doing all you can do and then be okay with it if you, you know you don't want to be phony and it would have been phony for me to go i didn't want to go there to be phony and i don't i didn't have any sort of belief that i needed to be in that spot you know there was no point she wasn't you know that wasn't where i needed to be i could talk to her in whatever way or she could talk to me in whatever other way without my being there with a bunch of people who didn't know really anything that was true about what was going on I just kind of wanted to let you know how that went and how that was for me and that I made the mistake of asking people to tell me how it was. I should have just been okay with my decision and not asked that because that was really a hard thing for me to see. You know, basically that life went on without me and they were just fine with that, that life went on without me. And that there really doesn't appear to ever be any real consequences on their side for what they did. And, uh, you know, other than losing me and my children from their lives, which didn't seem to really bother them all that much. You know, it was, basically, I guess, what they wanted because they opted for it. So, uh, you know, a um, lot, of, lot of really brutal lessons in my life, but that was, that was, a, that was a good decision that I'm, glad I, that I'm glad I went with. And, um, you know, it was a personal decision and that's what these decisions are. They all are very personal decisions. And so, um, you know, but really ask yourself a lot of questions before it's too late. Okay, thank you so much. I will talk with you later. Bye-bye.